Hi, how you doing? Good, I hope. I've done some more studying on the ET thing, and like I said in my last one about Enoch, religion has a lot to do with it, and it still keeps getting mentioned everywhere, like I told you before. <clears throat> I'm still reading my Bible every day. Old Testament and New, I have bookmarks in. and read a page or two out of each one. And other books that I just seem to feel nudged toward to look up um, is, is like uh, archaeology and uh, Eric Von Daniken is writing some very good books about the ETs and archaeology as well. And I'm wondering, could it be that the many races might have been, said to have been, created by gods or mutated from the man God created by the fallen angels so they could be worshipped? and called gods was this because some of them are so strange looking um, in Romans 120 it appeared to me after I found it the other day to be a prophecy that God would make it possible for us to see them the invisible with the high-tech cam vids if the naked eye can't see it and uh, Colossians 1, 15 through 16 tells that he created all visible and invisible ones. Okay. There is also a thing about religion in uh, Danikin's book. It makes me strongly suspect that Maron Maroni that Joseph Smith had contact with was one of the fallen angels. And they tried to justify his lies by pollu polluting God's name by inserting his son Jesus into the book of Enoch. As well, one of the things that seems to be proof was the golden plates that Joseph was given and was not able to look at for a long time but seemed to be made by a machine which didn't exist in mankind, around in man at that time. So, the first book that I want to tell you about is The Gods of Prehistoric Man by Johannes Meringer. And it is about the religion as well. It goes through the early Paleolithic period the Upper Paleolithic Period, the Mesolithic Period, the Neolithic Period, the religions of prehistory. And it's very telling. It made connections with me for what I read in the Old Testament when prophets had warned the Jews about worshiping these kind of idols that these other men had. And we must be missing a space of time for man to remember just exactly what was going on in between the time man was a caveman and how he evolved learning to make tools and things like that that apparently the fallen angels taught them. So, this book... I find highly interesting. They talk terrible about him, the skeptics and debunkers, but I think they are some of those fallen angels or the demons they have possessing some people to be against the truth. And his, his book, History is Wrong, Eric Von Daniken, it makes so much sense. And I wanted to read you a little bit. 
he was uh, he went to study these plates and um, or this library they supposedly had found and he talks about the magnificent tip temples on page 164 on their way from South America into the north the ancestors of today's Mormons built many temples this is written in the Book of Mormon even temples after the manner of the Temple of Solomon one of these incomprehensible systems lays high in the Andes in Peru. The temple of Shaban de Huntar. No archaeologist has a clue who built this impressive temple complex at an elevation of around 3,180 meters above sea level. So they speak respectfully of a Shaban culture. Even the dating of the building work is uncertain. Experts argue that Chauvin de Hantar was a place of pilgrimage, the religious center of an unknown people that suddenly appeared in the high valley of the Mosna River and dominated the culture in the area for several centuries. A center of pil pilgrimage? Which God did the Indios make pilgrimages too? In Chauvin de Hantar, there are many inexplicable columns and fantastic reliefs Featuring flying, flying deities, deities. Below the temple in the main square, a colleague of the archaeologist Julio Citello found an obelisk, which now resides in the Archaeological Museum of Lima. As no one has ever figured it out, I'll show you the engravings on page 165. <coughs> Excuse me. May the light of decryption shine on you. Just as inexplicable is the Ramon de Stella, also found in Chauvin de Hantar, and also to be found in the Archaeological Museum, Museum of Lima. I know you can't see it on here that well, but you really ought to buy or check out this book at your library and read it. It's very informative. They even had more stuff here that he found. And these people were helping him and giving him permission to write about it. And all of a sudden, they went berserk. And you can read about this in here, too. This block is made of detrite, a type of ign igneous rock. is 1.75 meters tall and is 17 meters thick. Archaeologists speculate about a jaguar god, snake, or cat gods. Makes me wonder if I should like cats. <laughs> but I got one. Um, scepters, monsters, masks, and even the consummate image of the incarnation of the godhead, the god of creation, Barakoka. Wolfgang Volkort, a top engineer, is the only person who has taken a different approach. He took an extensive look at Ramondi Stella and was able to clearly demonstrate that the engravings were actually a highly precise, symmetrical, technical drawing. It perfectly shows the structure of a steam engine with ratchet blades, rotary pistons, levers, leaf springs, and ball joints. The machine could be used to tighten ropes and pull loads. Engineers look at things with different eyes, archaeologists. They have a different reservoir, reservoir of specialist knowledge. And even though Volkreut's analysis is faultless and can be attested down to the smallest detail, that doesn't bother the archaeologists in the slightest. Their blinkers allow no other interpretation apart from their own. Books by authors such as Volkreut or Blumbrich, a NASA chief engineer who carried out a flawless and word-for-word -word analysis of the spaceship described by the prophet Ezekiel in the Old Testament, who I suggest you read too because it seems awfully similar to what I've been seeing, I have seen are not considered part of the scholarly literature to be used in their craft. 
Yet works such as those by Volkreuth and Blumrich pleasantly add another dimension to this cramped and inhibited world view. They open windows and let in fresh thoughts, but keep your eyes firmly bolted shut. What you don't know can hurt you. And that can be wrong. Annoyingly, the winged beans and the engravings on the Ramon di Stella are so finely wrought and precisely carved into the extremely hard diorite that standard tools such as a sharp chisel could not possibly have been used. Even a lay observer can see that straight away. That's why I'm showing you the pictures to achieve this level of precision. Extremely hard rotary drills must have been used. Who had that sort of technical expertise back then? My money is on a group of people led by a highly adept Lord who provided his people with technology when they needed it, not only to carve diorite with this degree of precision, but also to accurately engrave metal plates. And I recommend to the industrious Mormons who are always looking for copies of the metal library of their forefathers that they try taking measurements under the temple of Shaban de Hantar. A question of faith. I have a great respect for the Book of Mormon and the knowledge contained within it. And I also admire the Mormon faith in the histories of Ether and Nephi. But there is one point where I take exception. Again and again in the Book of Mormon you can find insertions from allegedly Jesus, the alleged founder of Christianity. The Church of Jesus, so says the Lord in the Book of Nor Mormon is not developing as had been foreseen. It is evolving in a completely false direction. Therefore he, the Son of God, has come to America to found a new true church, the Church of Jesus of Latter-day Saints. I can understand these insertions. Joseph Smith and his brave companions were under a great deal of pressure in the United States. The only religion that was allowed to exist albeit in countless different variations, was Christianity, and the utterly nonconformist messages of Ether and Nephi simply didn't fit the picture. Smith and his followers would have been hunted down, denigrated, humiliated, and harassed. Many young Mormons actually did end up in prison, including Joseph Smith himself. Some form of correction was vital and namely one that brought the Son of God, Jesus, into play. So in came the insertions. Their reasoning was fully understandable, but false, just as false as the later Jesus' insertions in the book of Enoch, which were made by a later hand and exist nowhere in the original text. The whole Jesus story, starting with original sin, the immaculate conception, the redemption, the resurrection, and going right on through to the ascension. All pillars of the Christian faith is mixed up from the very beginning. This is not know-it-all Eric von Daniken speaking. This comes from renowned theology professors such as the Catholic scholars Prof Professor H. Kong and Professor J. Drewerman or the researcher and church critic Karl Heinz Deschner. If, however, the Christian church is based on erroneous foundation, if there was no original sin and subsequently no need for redemption, then logically speaking, no son of God could have come to America to improve and correct his own religion. El humanist, as the ancient Romans used to say, to err is human, not divine. Why a metal laboratory, library in Ecuador? After the Lord patently failed to manifest in any form as the great spirit of creation for thousands of years, and because he used technology instead of miracles, he assumes the burden of proof. In the future, he wants to prove to mankind in no uncertain terms that he was the one who was pulling the strings back then. This could work in a critical society that doubts everything, that fake pictures using computers that no longer believes in wonders 
and that has renounced the supernatural and has brought into scientific reason, but never with new suedo miracles, especially miracles that are likely to be exposed after 20 years or so when technology has caught up. Mankind demands solid, scientific, flawless, material proof. It must be tangible, photographable, datable, and definitely, definitively significant. It must be, as the Book of Mormon puts it, of great value. <clears throat> Not for the people all those thousands of years ago. We are the people being addressed. This conclusion is clearly logical, since the Lord had the plates engraved all those millennia ago, just so they could be read in the future. These proofs of the Lord are supposed to turn up when it shall be said that miracles are done away, and it shall come even as if one should speak from the dead. Mormon 8.16 With the great metal library in Ecuador, we are standing directly before this great realization. At the most, we can speculate about the motivation for this divine behavior. But the messages themselves are completely unmistakable. The Lord of Antiquity is not identical with the great spirit of creation. He, of course, would not make any mistakes in the first place, so would have no need of later corrections. So this Lord has metal plates specially made for the people of the future because he wants to prove that it was he who was pulling the strings. The great spirit of creation doesn't need to prove anything. It seems to me that these so-called gods of the past were, even then, already planning their return. And they wanted to ensure that we will respect them for what they did for us back then. They created us in their image. <clears throat> Mormon 8.14 FF and blessed be he that shall bring this thing to light, for it shall be brought out of darkness unto light, and what whoso shall bring it, the historical account to light, him will the Lord bless. And this is one of the things that shows why I kept flipping back and forth. It's extraterrestrials, people from another planet, but I kept getting the sense it was a man. Is a homo sapien man in our nation able to hide high tech stuff that they've been doing to me? Or is it a male from another planet that, that reminded me of the old movie the gods have gone crazy. Have you ever watched that? I really strongly suggest you do. Because that is uh, when there was a tribe in the jungle that didn't know anything going on anywhere in the world. An airplane went flying over and the pilot threw out an empty Coke bottle down there. And they worshipped it. They were so amazed by it something like that they were given a gift and they thought he was a god well our men would want the same thing to happen for them if they go off like to mars and they uh, they find people there that's not smart and technology as a, they are and worship them as gods that's a big blasphemy and sin And I just don't trust men these days. And they have to earn their trust when they've broken it long before. I pray for all you people out there that believe and have experienced these things as well. And I hope you can find as much as I do about it. And I pray for the wicked. May they repent before it's too late. You have a good night or day, wherever, whenever you are. Later.